We're joined this evening by recently appointed Chief Executive of the Dunedin City Council, Sue Bidrose. Sue, good evening. Um, tell us a wee bit about yourself. You've been with the DCC for a few years now, but you came from out of town. So where did you come from? I came from uh, a council in West Auckland, Waitakere City Council. I was a refugee from the super city, so I didn't want to work particularly for a council that had 18,000 staff. I, I like working for a small city. I, I'd, I'd studied here actually, I did my doctorate here, or finished my undergraduate work and did my doctorate here in Dunedin and had always wanted to come back. So um, very nice opportunity to come home presented and here I am. And you're, you're from Auckland originally, you were born no, and brought up there? Or? I'm Wainuiamata, the Hutt Valley, I'm a hut chick from just out of Wellington. Okay, and um, just to, to give a little background into yourself, what we, uh, we, we waved the other day as you were turned down or, or going quite safely down <laughs> Lower Stewart Street in a classic car, and you also have an interest in two-wheelers, so just give us a wee bit of a background of that. What I do in my spare time? Yes, something like that. I, um, I do, I ride a motorbike. Um, I've, I've ca sort? currently got a Triumph Bonneville. Uh, it's a modern Triumph Bonneville. I'm, I'm not quite as... Uh, up to the mechanical exploits of owning a Triumph, a, a classic Triumph as I used to be. But I've had Triumphs, Ducatis, um, uh, Royal, uh, Royal Enfield for a few years. So I, I quite like old classic motorbikes. Toured around India on Royal Enfield a few years back, which I enjoyed immensely with my partner. Um, the car, I've got a 1977 Triumph Stag, proudly called by uh, Time magazine one of the 50 worst cars ever, ever built. And I'd like to say mine is... However, no exception. Okay, now, let's move to your job. People, I guess, who are watching will read about you in the paper and have a vague idea of, of what you do. Uh, we read about your salary recently. It's more than $300,000, which is a lot compared with most people. What do you do for that? Um, look, it is a lot, and it's rate payer money, uh, which has a particular set of obligations on me. Um, I, I, I am the... the the, the final step, I guess, the, the, the person who leads an organisation with um, 650 full-time equivalents of staff, that's actually o over 800 people. Uh, we collect $120 million a year in rates. We have a, about a $200 million budget. We have a whole series of council-controlled organisations that are, that are profit-generating businesses that, that also get looked after through to the chief executive. Uh, in terms of what is my job, I guess it's making sure that being pretty on top of what most of what's going on in the organisation. Is it delivering the kind of city that the, that the councillors have asked us to deliver? Are we getting best bang for our buck? I think maybe one of the most important things is that it sets the, the values tone, the chief executive sets the kind of values tone for the organisation. As a public sector organisation, what kind of council are we? And there's been a lot of discussion about this in Dunedin City Council in recent years, and I think the resident opinion survey is showing we've 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 turned a bit of a corner in terms of how our ratepayers view us. Paul was a fantastic chief executive to work for. I, I really enjoyed that experience a lot, and I'm pretty strongly committed to continuing it to take us down the path of being being a, an excellent public service organisation serving the needs of our ratepayers through our councillors who get to who get to be the interpreters of that for us, if you like. Yeah, I mean, you talk about values. What what values do you try and um, pass on to your to your to the staff? Um, that that idea of public service is really important to me. Uh, for a long time, that was kind of out of vogue, if you like, and um, public sector organisations were encouraged to be innovative and. Uh, and efficient and kind of taking on managerial concepts out of the private sector. Now, innovation and efficiency are, are still um, very important, don't get me wrong, but I think all around the world in the public sector, this idea of who you are as public servants, it used to mean kind of gliding on. It, it really doesn't anymore, but it is that sense of, of we serve the ratepayer. Ratepayers who by and large and didn't even earn a lot less than me, have to pay my salary whether they want to or not. It's beholden on me therefore to think regularly, have I earned that? Have I, am I returning good value for what I do? And really encouraging across our organisation to have that attitude to ourselves and how we serve the people who, who pay our salaries. It's very strong for me. Okay, now I just want to compare you and, and that sort of values to, to the recent past. We had Jim Harland uh, as Chief Executive not so long ago. Uh, he was 
reasonably forward and saying he supported the stadium and he, you know, was possibly behind it to, to a great extent. Do you, could you ever imagine yourself in a situation where, where you would push a project like that? Um, well, as for that stadium, we've got it, and I certainly support making it, doing whatever we can to make it, to reduce its cost to the ratepayer, and to make it a fantastic facility in the city. So, so in that sense, I support the stadium. I, I think that um, in this city, there's an economic development strategy that very clearly sets out the things that we're going to do in order to economically thrive, and econ in order to pick up our share of the New Zealand population growth and economy growth so that so that we're not in a situation where all of that's focused on Auckland and that we uh, that we that we economically thrive ourselves. And I think it's unlikely that kind of silver bullet model of economic development, if you like, here's the one big thing that's going to save us. It's going to have much currency here in Dunedin. I don't see much appetite for that round the council table. But you know my job is to give the advice to the councillors to ensure that my staff give the best possible advice to councillors, and when they make the call about what they want us to do for economic development purposes or any other, then my job is to get them behind and make that as successful as I possibly can. Finally, uh, and, and briefly, because we're running out of time, what Sorry. would you consider consist, uh, success uh, in three years? Resident Opinion Survey, the last one, showed that people are feeling increasingly good that we are their city council. I'd like to see that at an all-time high. I'd like to see ratepayers feeling that they can influence the council laws in terms of the vision of, for the city, and I'd like them to um, increasingly feel that we are acting on their behalf. That would be the biggest notion for success for me, I think. Okay, Sue Bedrose, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, David.